Hey there. Six years ago, I asked this question on Stack Overflow. How to render Jinja2 template after a jQuery Ajax request to a Flask application? And through some research, I was able to answer my own question. People found the answer uh, helpful to some extent. However, some more people asked about a better explanation. So I promised to make a YouTube video, which I did. However, the video's quality was pretty bad because six years ago, I did, not, I did not have decent equipment to make a decent quality video. Uh, so I found that to this day, this video is still helping people and I'm getting some views and some comments on the video. So I said, all right, let's make, let's remaster this video basically and make it in a better quality, a much better quality. So here it is. Let's start by explaining what the heck are we doing. If I refresh here, we have an HTML page with a button in it that says click me. And whenever I click it, an Ajax request happens to a Flask uh, application. And this Flask application returns to us HTML. And we append this HTML to the current page without any uh, page refresh basically using an ajax request so if i reload the page and i clear the network tab let's work on the network tab here a bit if i click the button you can see in an ajax request go right here which is um, the request that happens using jquery and it goes to a, an endpoint called underscore get underscore data which is the same endpoint and the same code that I used in that video. So just it stays relevant. And the response we get back is basically JSON with data is the HTML that we need to append to the page. And this HTML comes from a Jinja2 template after it has been rendered. So let's go to the code and see how all of this works. First of all, I'm, I expect you already know Flask since you want to use Ajax with Flask. So I'll just fly over what, what's going on here uh, quickly. Uh, first things first, we Flask is a Python framework, of course. So we, we run in a Python uh, file. And the very, the very first thing we do is we import Flask, render template, and JSONify from the Flask library. And then we create a new Flask application using this app equals Flask name. And we start define, uh, defining two routes for our application. The very first one is the index route, which is the thing that renders this uh, HTML page in the first place. Let me just do this. And this is the main route or the root route, whatever you want to call it. And all it does is return a render template called index.html right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second route is get data, which accepts a post request. And this get data is what renders the template that we want to render dynamically based on the Ajax request and returns the JSON data to our jQuery, which then is appended to the HTML page. <laughs> if we go to index.html right here, we can see it's basically just a simple HTML5 boilerplate with two, with a button right here that has an ID of PTN and a div that has an ID of response right here. This button is basically this button right here and this div is what the response gets appended into after our Ajax request. Next we're loading a jQuery library um, using a CDN. I'm doing this because in the first video I used jQuery and the original question was about jQuery. But right, like these days, lots has changed. You can use fetch, you can use X XML HTTP request. Lots of options you can do in pure JavaScript to do an Ajax request without the need for jQuery. But I digress. So after loading jQuery, we basically have a, an event listener on this PTN uh, button right here. So using jQuery, we're selecting an element that has an ID of BTN, which is this button, and we're listening for a click event on it. So whenever this button is clicked, we are going to send an Ajax request from jQuery to this URL right here, which is get data, which is the endpoint we defined right here. 
and the type of this ajax request will be post i mean ajax request is an http request so the type of the http request we're sending will be post and then success whenever this request is successful we are going to accept a response back and this callback is going to happen whenever the request is successful and what we're doing in the callback is basically saying select the div that has an id of response which is this empty div right here and then append to it whatever response to data is coming back to us from flask which if you remember was if i click here and check the response was this html basically all right so so far we click the button we send an ajax request and whatever comes back in this data gets appended in um, this div right here which has an id of response if i expand this you'll see this div right here and if i expand it it has our ul and li's right there so how does this work we will simply go back to app.py and let's analyze this section right here so the very first thing we do in this get data function is we create a random list which has element one element two and element three which are these elements right here this is basically an array in python and next we return a jsonify which is the function we imported right here from the flask library which basically takes a python dictionary and turns it into a json object and then we create the key data which is the thing that is right here and we give it a value of whatever render template to this response.html is going to return so what we're doing here is we're telling jinja hey or sorry we're telling flask hey take this html uh with jinja2 template and uh add give it this my list equals my list so we're passing an extra param that way our response.html has access to this array render it so parse the jinja2 template and return as an html and then pass all of this as a json object as a response back to the request so if we view our response to html we can see that it basically has the ul and for each elem element in my list so for each um for each element one element two and element three in this list just print out an li with whatever that element value is so that's how we end up with three li's with element one element two and element three on the page and all of this happens because of this render template here which basically returns uh, the html representation of this html file after it has been rendered and then in our response dot h or excuse me in our uh, index dot html we append this value into the div with the id of response and this is how we end up with this when we click on the button without any page refresh so a quick recap what happens is if i refresh i go to the network tab let's clear it let's expand this a bit we click the button we send an ajax request to this get data get data if i view the code here creates a random uh, array it has element one two and three and then passes this array to um, uh, jinja2 template which is called response.html and this response.html loops over the array and puts them in an li or puts each one or each element of this array into an li and all of them in this ul and sends it back to this json uh, object and then this is the response to our ajax request which we take and we put it into this div with an id of response right here and this is basically the simplest explanation to this loop right here so one more thing that uh, was commented on the previous video which that each time we click the button if i minimize this a bit if each time we click the button the elements are going to keep duplicated and this is correct because we have not in anywhere defined that we should replace the html in here we're using append in jquery however if we want to replace the html content we will simply say html instead of append 
which was it gonna do is it will replace the HTML in the div instead of appending to it. Now, if you can see, I kept clicking the button over and over again. You can see the requests right here. However, we do not see any duplication. However, it's replacing the old HTML with the new one. Um, let's add element four right here, just to prove that this is the array that gets uh, rendered. Now, if I refresh, I click click me and we get element four right here. So whatever data we pass in this array that gets passed to this Jinja2 template will be rendered and then sent back to be appended to the page in the same loop that we did before. So this is it. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to comment. I also have a Twitter account, which I'm going to link in the description. Feel free to DM me if this does, still does not make any sense. And thank you for watching and I hope this video is still helping people and I hope that this remastered version is much better in quality and in explanation than the previous version. Peace.